live on sportsbookreview.com. Friday night, this is Kansas State against Stanford. Stanford 15 and a half, 48 and a half the total. Bill Snyder, great as a double digit dog. He's 9 and 4 ATS since 2009 when he came back. And a upgrade and good news at the quarterback position for K State, Teddy. Yeah, it sure is. Now let's talk about Snyder. Again, you talk about 9 and 4. This is a double digit dog since he returned to the Kansas State sideline back in 2009. He has a good record as an, as an underdog in, and of any point spread. He doesn't have to be double-digit uh, dog. He has a good record if you go back to his first tenure at Kansas State as an underdog. Not just a good record, an elite record. You look at Kansas State over the last five years, they have been one of the consistently profitable teams in all of college football. So for me, at first take on this game, there are certain teams I'm just not looking to lay points against. Kansas State is one of those teams. So I'm not a priori. It's going to take a big case for the Stanford side to get me interested there. It'd be K-State or pass. Now, you talk about the upgraded quarterback, Jesse Ertz returning. Remember, he got injured on the first possession of the opening game last year. All right. K-State's had some pretty good quarterbacks in the Snyder era. And last year, they were stuck with Jake Huebner. You know, 46% completions, more interceptions than touchdowns. He wasn't good. Uh, This is from the center, Dalton Reisner. Quote, the sky's the limit for Jesse. This is Jesse Ertz, this year's QB. People may not realize it, but the guy is such a great athlete. We go to the pool, and he's the fastest swimmer. We go to the basketball court, and no one can guard him. He never loses at video games. He is a born winner, and I can't wait for him to prove it on the football field. But the question we got to ask, Polly, is Ertz going to have to put up a ton of points on the scoreboard to keep this game close because Stanford, are they going to score here or not? Yes, absolutely they will. I know Shaw's Mr. Conservative, but the best player in college football is McCaffrey. The best player in college football last year was McCaffrey. He was robbed of the Heisman. Stay up late, goddammit, and watch the Pac-12. That was a joke. Now, Shaw feels he got screwed. Will he be out there in blowouts this year to pad his stats? Well, that's the thing. Okay, there's two thought processes here. One is that we have a track record with David Shaw. David Shaw is a classy guy. He's never been a run-up to score for the sake of running up to score for the polls type of guy. He's always been a, I'm going to put my starters on the bench in a blowout game type of guy. But this is Stanford's prime national TV opportunity. I believe it's their only national TV game at night all year when you have a Heisman contender and a Heisman front runner who needs that type of exposure. You know what? In some games, you're up 20 in the fourth quarter. Maybe McCaffrey's on the bench. In this one, maybe he stays out there an extra series or two or three. Here's what Shaw said after the Rose Bowl. Quote, I think he was the best player in America before this game, so I think it's just the icing on the cake for us. I do think it's a shame that a lot of people didn't get a chance to see him over the course of the year. Apparently, the games were too late. In other words, exactly what you said, Polly. Stay up late, watch some Pac-12 football. It's good stuff. Yeah. It's a disgrace if you have a vote, you're not watching it. That, that That's asinine. Ryan Burns won the job. He was named the starter at quarterback. Bit of a surprise. He beat out that top five recruit who was a redshirt sophomore. Both quarterbacks likely to play, and Burns is no scrub. Number 12 quarterback recruit in the country. But remember, Teddy, and certainly they'll remember this, what happened last year to start the season, Stanford went to Northwestern for that 9 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. on their time uh, kick at Northwestern, and they were flat and scored six points with Hogan. Yeah, and hey, hey, look, Hogan was a game manager. He was a four-year starter. He got an NFL contract. He had the size, but he was nothing more than a game manager. He never really took that next next step. Now we've got Burns. And, of course, it was a little bit of a surprise that Burns beat out Chris, who was a top-five recruit. But Burns, he's no scrub. He was the number 12 recruit in the corner, in the country uh, in his year. And, as you mentioned, both guys are likely to see some playing time in this ballgame. There's a decent chance that the Cardinal aren't going to have a major drop-off in offensive production despite the loss of a four-year starter at QB. And, yeah, they were talking about the opening day loss at Northwestern last year where they have 240 yards Six points. They were 10.5-point road favorites, and they were not even capable of moving the football. When you don't score 10.5, you can't cover minus 10.5. That's something that in, that they've been at least been talking about using as motivation for their opener this year. 
USC is always overrated. I'm not buying the Washington hype just yet. UCLA can be pretty good, but I think Stanford's the best team in the Pac-12. See if they can prove it this year. Up next, that we'll go inside the huddle. The big news with Bridgewater out for the Vikings. Where do they go from here, and why it's so hard to bet Week Four in the preseason? And the play of the day on Sports Bit betting insight today. Hey guys, for the full video, go to sbrpicks.com. It's Wednesday. It's the end of August, everybody. Sports Bit viewers, when you guys are all done with Teddy and Paulie, come on into the Odds Couple Show. Pistol Pete is off to New York, and Double J is sitting in with me. Double J, you think I can keep the August rush going one more day? Well, let's hope so, Mark. Fired up. Glad to be here. Okay. All right, guys. Tune in later on.